Welcome, Feliz Cinco de Mayo. It is Cinco de Mayo, and we have a really special show lined up today. So for all of our Latino brothers and sisters, Feliz Cinco de Mayo. And for all of our friends that like tacos and margaritas, hey, happy Cinco de Mayo. Um, and yesterday was Star Wars Day. May the 4th be with you. And I'd like to quote something from Princess Leia, actually the actress who played her, Carrie Fisher. She said something very profound, which is very fitting for this show. Stay afraid, but do it anyway. What's important is the action. You don't have to wait to be confident. Just do it, and eventually the confidence will follow. I think that's good advice uh, for everyone. And uh, I'm Mark Anthony, and welcome to Transformation Talk Radios, The Psychic and the Doc. My amazing co-host, Dr. Pat Vasili, the street smart spiritual behavioral psychologist, will be back next week. So this week, you got the psychic and the rock, my <laughs> co-host, Rocky Trainer. Hey, Rocky, how you doing? I am doing quite well. Um, I'm in Key Largo right now. So hello, all concrete public that I told about this wonderful show. I hope you're tuning in and go ahead, take it away, Mark. Oh my gosh. So she's in the Florida Keys. Uh, let me tell you, there's worse places to be in, in May, that's for sure. But you know, uh, Rocky, we got a really special guest tonight, don't we? Oh, I know. I'm quite excited. I had the pleasure of meeting her before, and I'm so happy that she is here. She is just an amazing person, and I know you have a wonderful introduction for her. Yeah, let me give a, a little have. Yeah, a little bit of background. Our guest is Yvonne Kaysen and Dr. Yvonne Kaysen, and she's the president of, of um, past president of IANS, the International Association for Near-Death Experiences. And not only that, but she's had five near-death experiences, two in childhood and three in her adult life. And Dr. Kaysen is the founder of Spiritual Awakenings International, which is an amazing global nonprofit organization dedicated to raising awareness about all types of spiritually transformative experiences, which is a very important term she's going to tell us about. Dr. Kaysen has published five books, her most recent, Touched by the Light, Exploring Spiritually Transformative Experiences. She's had hundreds of professional public presentations, given scores of media interviews. She's in demand as a keynote speaker. And Dr. Kaysen was recently interviewed on the Dr. Oz Show and on Coast to Coast. So welcome to the psychic and the rock, the psychic <laughs> and the doc, um, our good friend, Dr. Yvonne Kaysen. It's good to have you here, Yvonne. Uh, hi, hi, Mark and Rocky. It's great to be here. You forgot to mention in that long list of things that I'm the current president of Spiritual Awakenings International. Well, I was going to gonna ask founder. you about that. So, Yvonne, do you hold any present uh, positions? <laughs> Why, yes, I do. <laughs> I am the president of Spiritual Awakenings International, and it's just a joy to do that. That's a, a U.S.-based um nonprofit corporation. And our mission is to raise awareness globally. So although we're US based, we're, our, our audience is global right. about the whole spectrum of spiritually transformative experiences people are having, including near death experiences. But near death experiences is only one of the hold types. Hold on, hold on. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Okay, so, okay. so, all right, this um, Spiritual Awakenings International, SAI for short has a very special event coming up next month, doesn't it? That is true. We are really delighted to be holding our very second international conference, and it's going to be on Saturday, June 11th and Sunday, June 12th. And it's online and it's free. It's we're requesting uh, donations if you have it in your uh, ability, but it's free to register. And we have 30 international speakers from 12 different countries around the world and one of our speakers is you mark anthony so we're <laughs> delighted that you're going to be one of our speakers at our upcoming conference well, thank you i'm really looking forward to it i'm very honored to be part of that 
And, uh, you know, Rocky, um, you know, she's my manager and, and producer of this show. And we've traveled to, to several conferences. And I remember meeting you at, at IONS. Do you remember that, Rocky? Oh, I sure do. I was quite impressed with everything that you presented to the entire audience. And to find out that you have experienced near death um, more than once, just I, it flabbergasted me. Just yeah, totally five times. times. You know, yeah, um, I, I want to get into that, but I want you, Dr. Kaysen, to tell our audience, what do you mean by and what is a spiritually transformative experience? Okay, thanks for asking, Mark. Um, spiritually transformative experiences, that is a, or STEs for sure, for short, <laughs> that, that is a term that I coined back in 1994, and uh, at first nobody heard of it, but now it's catching on, so a lot of people are starting to use it, and what it is, it's an umbrella term, so it's an umbrella term that encompasses a really, really broad range of spiritual and paranormal experiences that people are having today. And in fact, they've been having it for, for forever, for millennia. But it includes, it does include near-death experiences, but includes many other types of experiences, such as mystical experiences, spiritual energy, or what in yoga is called kundalini awakenings, inspired creativity, or what some people call downloads, and all sorts of psychic and intuitive experiences like clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience, transdimensional experiences, mediumship, channeling, out-of-body experiences, so that all of that fits under the umbrella of spiritually transformative experiences. So this is kind of the technical term for what a lot of people call an aha moment. <laughs> well, I would call it aha moment one, <laughs> including under it. You know, and, and the reason I coined the, the, the phrase, I don't know if you're going to ask me that next, but the reason I coined the phrase was, <laughs> was, was, um, intuitive. I'm reading your mind. <laughs> I guess I am intuitive. Is that, um, I started having experiences myself. You know, I'm a medical doctor, as you said, and I used to be on faculty right. at the University of Toronto. And when I was in medical school and I started meditating, I had this really powerful experience in my meditation, which I now know was a Kundalini awakening with a mystical experience. But of course, in medical school in Canada, you know, I had traditional medical training. It's like, what on earth just happened to me? And, and uh, I didn't even have a word, you know, in my vocabulary right. and what I was learning in medical school to even call it, you know. And then when I was a medical resident uh, in, in my residency, again, in Canada, in Toronto, Canada, I was sent on a medevac and my, uh, in Northern Ontario, and there was a plane crash a medevac plane crash in which I almost died. I can tell you the story in more detail if you want, but I'm just bottom line. I had what I now know was an out of body type of near death experience. Wow. And at where I went what, out what of happened? body. And it let, well, basically um, what happened, I was on this medevac and uh, with a critically ill patient and it was a propeller airplane, not one of these fancy helicopter medevacs. And we flew into bad weather, you know, in Canada in the winter, we have bad weather. So we flew into a <laughs> snowstorm and uh, they say the air filters of the two and the propeller engines froze over one than the other. So oh obviously gosh. we had no propellers and we started going down to the ground and oh. it's like really bad turbulence. and. My immediate reaction was um, intense fear and panic. I think anybody was, and, and it, like it literally <laughs> jumped out of my heart. The thought it was, oh God, I'm gonna die. And I didn't say it out loud. It just sort of jumped out of my heart. And at that instant, it was actually before the plane crashed was when my near death experience began because all of a sudden I heard, I, I felt this like force field of peace descending upon me and it was like it was pushing down all of my fear and then I heard an inner voice and before this time I'd never heard inner voices and I heard an inner voice say be still and know that I am God I wow am with you now and always 
And the vibration that came with those words was so powerful. It just calmed me right down. And I felt, you know, it, it, it's hard to explain, but somehow I felt totally peaceful, totally unafraid, whether I'd live or die. Anyway, the plane, the pilot managed to get it down onto the surface of a semi-frozen lake without crashing into trees, which was quite a heroic miracle. But then as soon as the, the plane came to a stop, it broke through the, the thin ice, nose dived and went down into very deep water. Okay, hold that thought because I can't think of a better cliffhanger before our first break. And everyone, you're listening to The Psychic in the Dock with our special guest, Yvonne Kaysen, and special co-host, Rocky Trainer. We'll be back in just a minute. I'm Mark Anthony, and you're listening to Transformation Networks, The Psychic in the Dock. I have to admit, even though, you know, I always rooted for the Jedi Knights and the light side of the Force, the dark side really had the better music, don't you think? <laughs> I like the music on both sides. <laughs> anyway, so Yvonne, you left us with a cliffhanger that just prior to the plane, the medevac plane that you were in crashing, and it, it you had this intense, serene sensation. Your NDE occurred before impact. Take us back to that moment. Well, uh, as I mentioned, the, the, the voice that came with it as well, that um, reading scripture, stating scripture that, that, that put me in this deep sort of semi-mystical state of peace and calm. Anyway, when the plane came to a stop, uh, it was on the surface of a semi-frozen lake. It quickly nosedived and sank into very deep water. And I had to very rapidly get out of the plane as it was sinking. I tried to save the, the, the patient. Unfortunately, I was not able to pull her out of the plane. Oh, she went down. The pilot, yeah, the pilot got out himself. They say I pulled the nurse out. Um, anyway, we were in uh, open water with very thin ice, the ice was not strong enough to support us. So we, in order to get to safety, we had to, I had to swim this long distance. They estimate about 200 yards in open water to the closest land. And the place that we had crashed is called Devil's Gap. Oh my God. How's that yes. for a coincidence? And the yeah. reason it's called Devil's Gap is because of the really strong current. So the water is treacherous in the summer and the winter, the ice never freezes. So I had to actually swim the Devil's Gap with that strong current and get to the closest land, which was an island. And I was wearing like heavy winter clothes and boots. So you're in Florida, so you don't know what it's like. Maybe you've been <laughs> up in the cold north, but you know, you wear parkas and you wear boots sure. and all this stuff. Yeah. I'm trying to swim a long distance in ice cold water with a strong current in a blizzard while you're wearing heavy clothes that are weighing oh, you down like imagine. lead weights. It was a really, really difficult swim. And I went under several times. Wow. And somewhere in the process of swimming to shore is when my near death experience changed or in the research field, we say deepened. And what happened was all of a sudden, I heard this loud sort of roaring noise, like the roar of a waterfall. It's like, and all of a sudden I found my consciousness lift up out of my body. And it didn't seem like my point of perception was in my body anymore, but it's more complicated than that because I wasn't dead. I was still swimming to shore. So actually what it was like, was like my consciousness was in two places at the same time. And it was like a split screen TV where most of my consciousness is like the big image. And it was up out of my body. And a little bit like the little image in the split screen TV was still in my body that was still like desperately struggling to swim to shore. Wow. And, and, and then the main part of my consciousness rose even higher. And I went into this realm that was filled with love and filled with light. And I felt the most powerful, beautiful, perfect, unconditional love that I've ever felt in my life. And in that experience or state of consciousness, whatever we're going to call it, I, I suddenly knew things. 
I, I visually I saw a face of light for a second and then it disappeared into the cloud like periphery. But there was wow. like no, but there was nobody like talking to me or explaining things or anything, but it was, I just somehow knew things. And, and wow. what I, what I knew when I was in this realm of love and light is I knew somehow in my soul, don't ask me how I knew, but I knew, I knew that what I was experiencing was the love of the higher power, the profound love of the higher power, or what I was raised to call God. And, wow. and what, and what I was experiencing God to be was not at all like I was taught God was supposedly like, right? It was not an old man with a long white beard sitting on a throne judging me of you and good and that. That was not what I was experiencing at all. What I was experiencing God or the higher power to be was like the force. <laughs> it started wow. it was like so an infinite force field <laughs> ahead, of love that, that so, interpenetrates all creation. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's just an amazing story. And so where did spiritually transformative experience come from? S-T-E. How did that come about? How did that come about? Well, that came out a little bit later. Let me just, if I may, complete the body and how I oh, got I'm back sorry, in my sorry. body, et cetera. Sure, Anyway, sure, if I please. may, you know, so I stayed in this realm of love and light um, until uh, my body was rescued. You know, I managed uh, to swim to shore. There's a whole bunch of so-called coincidences and miracles that I was able to swim to shore and that there happened to be a helicopter around that day that, that happened to be nearby and was able to rescue us because that's the only possible vehicle that could have gotten anywhere close to where we'd swum to because we swam to an island. Anyway, I was taken by helicopter, taken to the closest hospital, and then um, I was freezing. I could see my body lying on the, 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 you know, the emergency room table and they were trying to take my temperature and I was, they couldn't get a reading on the thermometer. They were puzzled because I was hypothermic. I was colder than the bottom of the thermometer. And I was floating further and further away from my body and I knew I was dying and I was okay. Because another thing that I knew when I was in, in the light was that what I think of as me will live on after my physical body dies and that there's absolutely nothing to be afraid of. So you were comfortable in this space. Oh, yeah. You went into yeah. in this consciousness. At that more, is, that's amazing. More, more than comfortable. Wow. I was... I was home. I was completely content. I was in complete joy. I was in complete peace. And so I was, I was ready to just, you know, let the body go. But then all of a sudden out of my body came these words, boy, could I use a hot bath? And I was really surprised <laughs> because like it came out of my physical body, but I wasn't thinking of those words. So I have no idea. My guardian angel spoke it through my body or so, something like that. So Yvonne, Rocky Ra had a question that's very important. Well, I, I, where, where does the term spiritually transformative experiences I come asked, from? Come to. Yeah, right, okay, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, we need to know that because the thing is you created that, that term. So we need to know where that came from okay. because that's going to be really important to what we're going to be talking about next. All right. So I'll get to it. So I'm just want to tell people that after I <laughs> said that they took us to the hot whirlpool baths of the physio department. <laughs> put my body in there and my body got reheated. And then my consciousness, it was like a genie being sucked into a bottle ah. that suddenly I was back in my body now. Wow. And that's how I got back in my body. Have to get me wow. back in the body for your listeners. So, okay, good. So <laughs> after that, so this relates to your question, what are spiritually transformative experiences afterwards? I tried to figure out what on earth had just happened to me. I was a young doctor. I was finishing my residency. So I went and I talked with all my doctor friends and I said, you know, have you ever heard of anything like this? What could this possibly be? And so all my doctor friends had a, called it a hallucination, basically. Oh, it must've been a hallucination because of low blood sugar and electrolyte imbalance. And I, and I just knew in my heart, no, this is not a hallucination. And I was searching for a word to call this experience ah. so now we're, we're heading in the directions of how i came to spiritually transformative experiences so as i searched for a word at first in the early years the best word i was able to find for my experience was a mystical experience 
because back then they used to think that you had to be clinically dead in order for it to be a near-death experience. Well, I'd never actually been fully dead. So I thought, well, if it's not a near-death experience, what is it? So, well, we had an out-of-body experience. We had a mystical experience. It wasn't a near-death experience, but I was researching near-death experiences. I also had had an experience in medical school that I told you I now realize was a kundalini awakening. So I started researching privately outside of my medical practice, all the broad spectrum of experiences, near-death experiences, mystical experiences, out-of-body and psychic experiences, kundalini awakenings. And back then in the 70s, and actually even to today, it's really true, many uh, groups and organizations are very focused just on one type of experience. You know, like some groups are only looking at Kundalini and some groups were only looking at near death experiences. And some groups were only looking at a certain type of psychic phenomenon. And it seemed to me, they must all be connected in some way, because guess what? They're all happening to me. <laughs> So there must wow. be some sort of connection. And so I thought, you know, we need to have a non-pathological name. Calling it a hallucination is like dismissing everything mystical and spiritual that's spiritual. happened since the beginning yeah. of man, right? And right. so there, there, we need to have a current vocabulary that would be non-pathological to call this whole array of experiences that I think are part of this global spiritual awakening that's happening. And so the inspiration came to me to create this umbrella term, spiritually transformative experiences. Perfect. Wow. What a great way for us to go to our next break. Um, that is amazing because when we come back, we're going to talk about a conference that Spiritual Awakenings International is going to be hosting in an online free conference uh, in June. And Yvonne, how can people get hold of Spiritual Awakenings International? How can they get hold of you? Website, please. Yes, the Spiritual Awakenings <laughs> International website, www.spiritualawakenings with an S international.org. That's spiritualawakeningsinternational.org. And you can find out about all of our events. You can contact me and we have a great conference website page there and you can sign up and register. Uh, it's free, but you need to register in order to attend to get our Zoom link. Fantastic, fantastic. And for all of those listening on the Transformation Network, we will be back in just a moment. Welcome back to a spiritually transformative Cinco de Mayo show. And uh, we've got the expert on spiritually transformative experiences. In fact, uh, not only the person who is the world's foremost expert on spiritually transformative experiences, but the doctor who coined the term. And uh, Rocky, you've had a yes. number of STEs yourself. I uh, recall that uh, you had a near-death experience not all that long ago. Yes, yes, that's why my voice has changed. Um, I was um, in for a routine procedure, and I given too many meds, and I went into cardiac arrest. And while I was there, I was laughing to myself going, oh, this can't possibly be an NDE. It's because I've been around you, Mark, and Yvonne, <laughs> and so many people. I thought, well, this could be a dream. But I found myself in an amazing garden. And beyond the garden were these beautiful trees. And beyond that, a chorus of voices speaking with me. And every time I walked towards these incredible flowers, it kept on saying to me in a chorus, don't step forward. It's not your time yet. And then I left and I go, oh, really? Is this an is this a NDE? This can't be an MDE. This must be really good meds you gave me for my procedure. And then it says, don't step forward. And then I basically floated and saw amazing foliage. And then the next minute, there I was on this operating table and everybody was like so happy. Right. And, was, and you said that, you know, your voice was damaged. And what happened was when you when she went into cardiac arrest, 
they had to put a, um, an intubation tube down her throat and they put the wrong size and it damaged her vocal cords. All my vocal cords. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's why, you know, um, and, and, you know, and, and Rocky has always had a beautiful singing voice. I mean, she could do a great rendition now of old man river, but, yes. um, but hitting, hitting those, those, um, I had a five and a half octave yeah, voice. Five and a half I had octave a voice. voice. Yeah. I could see so almost anything. Yeah. But, but, but she, long. yeah but she had a spiritually transformative experience yes. and, and Dr. Kaysen, um, I know that your SDEs, which you've had every type have let you realize that this is your life's work. And so did, how did that lead to you forming spiritual awakenings international? And then, you know, I want to get into talking a little bit about the upcoming conference. Mm-hmm. Well, basically, one of the things that happens to people who've had STEs of pretty well any type is they become more intuitive. And a lot of people get that spiritual guidance that comes in various forms. And, and so the, a term is downloads, where you get a sudden download of a whole bunch of information guidance. So, so I get lots of downloads. Okay. So it was, uh, I remember it was in July of 2019. Um, uh, I was having a conversation with Robert Baer, and uh, this was because we had both been uh, nominated for actually IAN's president and vice president. We thought, huh, let's see if we're compatible in our thinking to be teammates or, you know, as running slate mates. And he, as soon as we started talking, he's a, a multiple ND and SDE or two, he got a download and he says, Yvonne, I just got a download. I think we're supposed to found a different organization together. And so my reaction was, well, okay, whatever. I have to meditate about this and think about this. So I got off the phone and I went into meditation and boom, I got a download, like a really strong download. And it was, yes, you two are to found a new organization. And that organization will be called Spiritual awakenings international so i was given the name robert was the first one to get the idea and then i got yes and that this was the name and so we knew that we were being called by spirit to found this organization we didn't know how when or whatever we waited for the inner guidance of when to do it and we got the inner guidance wow and, and we launched i was given the exact date i remember robert said to me we can't be ready that fast but i was given no i was given the date june 15th 2020 was the day that we were to publicly launch and so i mean i worked you could see the smoke rising from my head i worked so hard to get our our website ready and everything ready in order to launch but we launched on June 15th, 2020, because that was our guidance from spirit. And the mission was to raise awareness and promote networking worldwide about the whole spectrum of spiritually transformed. So within two years, how, how many members, how many countries is Spiritual Awakenings uh, touched? Well, Spiritual Awakenings International has exploded, which I think reflects that there really is a global spiritual awakening happening all over the world. We are at, we have subscribers in 65 countries on on every continent except Antarctica. We're still waiting for those penguin researchers, but, (laughs) and, and, and what I want to share is our most recent country, because this really touched my heart on a deep level. I'm, you know, we're always keeping track of if we have new countries joining us. Our most recent country is the Ukraine. Oh. And within the last couple of weeks, we've had three new people from the Ukraine. And so it's like, oh, my God, you know, spirit works in strange and wonderful ways. Maybe people are turning to spirit because they're in life threatening situations. Maybe they're having STEs because they're in life threatening situations. I don't know. But I'm just really glad that that they're they found their way to Spiritual Awakenings International. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah that, that's fantastic. And. So on the second anniversary, that is you're correct. having a, a conference. Can you tell us about the conference? Absolutely. Well, we're having a, an online conference and we have 30 speakers from around the world from 12 different countries. 
And um, we're absolutely delighted that you, Mark Anthony, are going to be one of our speakers at the conference. I'm also going to be speaking at the conference. We're going to have a vast array of topics, everything from end of life experiences to after death communications to childhood near death experiences to spiritual emergencies to we're having several experiencers panels, you know, people who um, want to share the stories, you know, the interesting stories of their experiences and and uh, I'm really happy that Betty Eady is going to be one of our speakers. I don't know oh, if you've yeah. ever had her on your show. No. Not yeah. yet. Not yet. Well, maybe after the conference or before the conference. But she, um, as you may know, was one, of, she's a, of Native American Indian background. And she was probably the first person to write a uh, national bestseller on near-death experiences, because it came out in the left, late 70s, early 80s, and her book, Embraced by the Light, is like been a bestseller all of the world and translated into something like 30 languages. But, you know, it was not easy back then being a groundbreaker. I mean, she met with a lot of resistance. She and Danny and Brinkley were really the two that, that, that people that came public and were ground icebreakers to raise awareness. And I had the good fortune of meeting both of these people back in the 90s because the media was just beginning to pick up on this topic of near-death experiences in the early 90s. And they were invited to come to Canada. And so of course the Canadian producers said, gee, we really need some Canadian content. Is there any Canadian NDE experience? And it's like, I was like the only one that was public at that time. And wow. so uh, the three of us were at this symposium on near death experiences. And that actually was great uh, instrumental in me coming out of the closet about my NDEs. Well, speaking of which, that also made you the first Canadian medical doctor to specialize your practice in the research and counseling of patients with, who've had different types of STEs. So what made you decide to do that? Well, you know, when I when I first had my experiences, I told you about in medical school, my Kundalini awakening, my near death experience when I was a resident that I thought was a mystical experience, which it was um, as well. Uh, when I tried to speak with people, um, I didn't get any validation. So I basically went into the closet. So I was a closet mystic. I was practicing regular tradition, traditional medicine on the outside. And I was in the closet about my spiritual search and research and being a mystic and having all sorts of experiences. Then in 1990, um, I had another powerful STE, what I call my calling mystical experience. And I write about this in my book. I talk about all of these experiences in my book, Touched by the Light. And this calling mystical experience, it was even more powerful than a download. It was a massive download but with a profound mystical experience. And I knew that I was being called, that it was like my mission to come out of the closet and to advocate for experiencers so that the medical profession and the public would stop calling STE experiencers crazy. So I came back, talked to my, my uh, department chairman, and that is when I specialized my practice, became the first medical doctor in Canada to specialize my practice in the counseling and research of STE experiencers. That's fantastic. So all you Canadians out there, you know who to call. She's close <laughs> by. Retired. That's right. I'm we retired know now. <laughs> Toronto is a very cosmopolitan city, and uh, I'm sure very interesting people would love to um, meet you and and uh, go to you if they've had these experiences. Unfortunately, I've retired from medical oh, no. practice, but, but where um, they, but where they'll find me is online at Spiritual Awakenings International. Yeah. Dot org. Dot org. Oh, she's good. Yeah. <laughs> and, and everybody, please check out Spiritual Awakenings with an S, international.org, so that you can find out about this upcoming conference, because uh, Dr. Kaysen insists that membership is free, and certainly they are accepting donations, because, you know, people think, oh, it's a free organization. Right. But people still have to work for it. They still have to have a website. They still have to do promotion. And, you know, everybody expects those of us in the spiritual field to do everything from free. And it's like, yes, but, you know, our, you know, the bank doesn't, um, you know, 
uh, give us free mortgages, do they? Everything uh, and we don't get money. free electricity, free internet, free free yeah. anything. Mm -hmm. So so yes, and also because it is a um, nonprofit organization, your contributions are tax deductible. That's right. So also, um, I'd like I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Kaysen, what is the link for the conference and uh, and for someone on Facebook um, at, uh, asked us this? They they asked us if you could give the link one more time. Okay. All right, it's just go to our website, www.spiritualawakeningsinternational.org. And once you get to our website, you'll see that we have on the menu there, you can pick the conference and then you're there. <laughs> Great. Thank you for doing that. Thank you. Fantastic. Our Facebook, is, our Facebook is popping off questions left and right. So well, I want to make sure. Yeah. Yeah, and because this conference is great because it's going to be covering um, a wide array of SDE, spiritually transformative uh, experiences. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the term, you can call an enlightenment experience an aha moment or the what the heck was that? <laughs> um, and, and Dr. Kaysen is the world's foremost expert on STEs, and that's why she's been guided by the divine to create this amazing organization, which is having this conference. And uh, I know I'm very honored to be one of the speakers with this because, you know, um, Yvonne and, and I, you know, we realize that our life's work is to help people understand that physical death is not the end of our existence and that um, the spiritual, as I like to say in my book, The Afterlife Frequency, um, nothing is paranormal or supernatural. It's merely a natural part of normal life. That's right. That's right. And how can people get your book? Okay. And I just want to add, I, I say paranormal is the new normal. <laughs> it, it really is. Well, I mean, look at all the TV shows, you know, um, it'd be nice if some of them were a bit more highbrow, but you know, hey, they're out there. They're out yeah. there. And my book is called Touched by the Light. It's available on Amazon and uh, both in print or in uh, ebook format. So uh, yeah, Touched by the Light, Exploring Spiritually Transformative Experiences. And before we go off, off the air, Mark Anthony, how do we get your book and tell us your website? At afterlifefrequency.com, which is the same title as my book, The Afterlife Frequency. And um, I've been very, very honored because my book does go into um, quite a bit about um, spiritually transformative experiences because I cover all the different um, different forms of spirit contact. You know, we're going to go ahead and skip um, our next break. We're just going to go till the, the top of the hour um, because I think that, that this is just too interesting a topic uh, to take a break from. And um, Yvonne, so you were the first Canadian doctor to start gearing your practice towards helping people process their spiritually transformative experiences. And that was back in 1990. 90, that it, is correct. Yeah. So how did your colleagues in the medical profession respond to that? <laughs> well, uh, there were numbers of raised eyebrows and there were, there were um, definitely hurdles that I had to cross. And, um, you know, that like, for example, uh, the malpractice insurance said, how does this, uh, how is this insurable? How can we insure you? How does this uh, fall within the practice of medicine? And so did our licensing body is like, wow. please explain how this falls within the practice of medicine. And, and so I did, I, I prayed and meditated about it and I responded to the best of my capacity and they accepted my responses. I basically said that this is a new and emerging specialty. Uh, the American Psychological Association had just recognized spiritual experiences as something that exists. <laughs> And I said, there's nobody else that is specializing in this. So I'm actually doing a service by being the first doctor in Canada to specialize in this. Well, anyway, through the grace of God or the words perhaps that were given to me, they accepted that. And so I moved forward with it. Um, the other thing that really helped was that um, the public were getting interested in it. You know, so I told you about Betty Eady and Daniel Brady. Right. 
and there started being TV shows and, and while well, they were doing talk shows in the United States. So I started getting invited on talk shows in Canada. So actually throughout the nineties, it was the talk shows and the media and the press, they all wanted to interview. They wanted to do a profile piece on me. And so I had developed this big public profile. And so the medical profession, I would say, tolerated me. <laughs> oh, don't say that. You're a great guest. You're a great guest. <laughs> well, um, I remember um, when I was practicing personal injury law, it had taken years for chiropractic treatment to be accepted by the medical community and covered by insurance. And then acupuncture, you know, acu you know, back in like the, the 70s and the 80s, chiropractic treatment was looked at as voodoo medicine, mm -hmm. acupuncture, you know, you may have well as been boiling chickens at midnight and dancing around a fire, you know, um, but now they are seen as legitimate uh, and very, very beneficial forms of treatment. Exactly. And so when it comes to psychic traumas, um, or spiritual. You know, spiritual traumas, it takes time for this to be accepted. And, you know, now when you see in, in the New England Journal of Medicine articles about near-death experiences, um, you know, th the paradigm has shifted. You know, these mm -hmm. things are real. And the, and the benefit of living in the 21st century is that we now have the scientific capability to begin analyzing yeah. these phenomena. And so, you know, it's, it's really quite an honor to have you here um, as you. one of the pioneers uh, in you. this field. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. You know, oh. the, other, the other thing I want to throw in is that to give doctors and nurses and healthcare professionals the credit that is due, but they were also witnessing these phenomena. They were having people tell them about near-death experiences. Another thing people were talking about was end-of-life experiences, you know, that happen before people die, where they're talking with spirits on the other side, and then the related phenomenon after death communications. And these were both happening to doctors and nurses and healthcare professionals, and they were witnessing it. So then what started happening is that I started getting invited to speak to groups you know, particularly palliative care groups, etc. They wanted to know about it because guess what? They were seeing it in their patients. And so by me giving them a vocabulary, it became okay to start talking about it. That's fantastic. Wow. Well, that, that's very important because, you know, whenever anything is, is a new phenomenon, I mean, certainly near-death experiences where people die and their consciousness separates from the body. You gave a perfect example at the beginning of the show of an NDE. And they've been around for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. And then Dr. Raymond Moody, and, and you know him and I know him, and you know, mm -hmm. we've both been on his program. And, and um, he coined the term sure. near-death experience in the 1970s. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these type of phenomenon they need, and you termed, you know, spiritually transformative experience, I termed electromagnetic soul, mm -hmm. you know, because we now need to take these spiritual phenomenon, observe it objectively through the scientific method, and then give it terminology, which brings it into the 21st century. Exactly. And so it's, it's very, very important for us uh, to do these things so that people can understand them. You know, what Dr. Kaysen, what you're talking about is not voodoo or magic. These are legitimate experiences which can be explained scientifically and medically. Let me ask you this. With an ST, a spiritually transformative experience, a lot of people think that sitting on a mountaintop and all of a sudden, oh, you know, and the rays from heaven, they can be very traumatic, can't they? They can, but that is a type of STE. But, you know, STEs can be traumatic for a number of reasons, okay? They can be traumatic because you are confused. You don't know what's happening to you. You wonder if you're going crazy. You're afraid to tell people. And maybe if you try telling people, they, they, they minimize you or pathologize you, say that's crazy, you're hallucinating. And I mean, I've, I've heard horror stories. People go to their church pastor or whatever, and they're told this is work of the devil. Um, they go to their doctor. They said, oh, you need to go on medication. Um, and, and so it's pathologized. And, and just that 
pathologizing and not knowing what it is can be very traumatic. Yes. And, and yeah. so that's a big part of the mission of Spiritual Awakenings International and also my books where I, I, I outline and I give case examples of all the different kinds of STEs. They have a name, they're normal, they've been around for thousands of years. And just because people don't know about it doesn't mean they're crazy. They're very, very real. And so that that's one of the ways. But the other thing is that um, there are after effects and that can also be really challenging. Like, for example, your worldview might completely change. And right. if, if, if you're with um, in an environment with friends or family that have a, let's say, worldview A, <laughs> you know, without labeling it. But now after you've had your experience, your worldview has shifted. Like with me after my NDE and the plane crash all of a sudden I could see the oneness of all religions and I could, I was became extremely tolerant of people with divergent religious beliefs. Now, my certain relatives of mine happen to be very fundamentalistic in their religious beliefs. So this creates a problem because you're changed, right? And that you might get into conflicts with your family or even in your marriage. The other thing I do wanna mention is that some people actually have traumatic STEs that, for example, with near-death experiences, there's a small percentage of people that have what we label a distressing near-death experience. It isn't, yes. always, it isn't always love and light. Sometimes it's distressing. And similarly, other STEs, another one that can be distressing is past life recall. Yes. is that sometimes people will start popping into past life memories and we tend to remember traumas from the past. And so, you know, so now we're not only dealing with traumas in the current lifetime, but oh my goodness, now I'm trying to integrate and heal traumas from a past life and I can't even talk to anybody about it. And we're going to have to hold it there because let me tell you something, bringing you back to talk about dealing with the other side, if you will, of STEs is going to be a great show topic. So to for everybody, um, spiritualawakeningsinternational.org International. is how to find out about the upcoming conference in June, the SAI's uh, um, annual conference. We're going to have speakers from over 12 different countries. And, including um, Mark. In, in, <laughs> including me. <laughs> and including... Vaughn. <laughs> and including our esteemed guest, Dr. Yvonne Kaysen. And um, I want to thank everybody for tuning in to The Psychic and the Doc. We will be back next week. We're here every Thursday. And uh, my great co-host, Dr. Pat Vasily, I know she um, was upset that she could make the show because she really wanted uh, to, to interview you. So this week we had the psychic and the rock, but next week we'll be back with the psychic and the doc. And uh, for everyone out there who is celebrating uh, Cinco de Mayo, look, I was a DUI defense attorney. Don't drink and drive. And if you do call an Uber, call a taxi, call a Lyft, because we want to communicate with the other side not go there and certainly not send anybody there. So I want to thank everybody for tuning into the Psychic in the Doc on Transformation Network, and we'll be back next week. Thank you all. Love and, and light, everyone. Bye. Hey, everybody, thank you for tuning into the Psychic in the Doc with Mark Anthony and me, Dr. Pat but silly right here on transformationtalkradio.com hey look come back next week so we can explore with you more of life's many challenges and learn from fascinating guests and you know what even mark and me we'll connect you and discover insights from people in this life and from the afterlife extraordinary problems yeah they do they require extraordinary solutions but step into the world of possibilities with us on the psychic and the dot that's every thursday 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on TransformationTalkRadio.com. That's TransformationTalkRadio.com. And don't forget, we're also live face-to-face -face on Facebook.com, Transformation Talk Radio.